and whomsoever Allah lets go astray, he can never be guided. Know that I testify that there is none that is worthy of but Allah. None is worthy of worship but Allah. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the seal of his messenger. Know that the best of words are that of the Quran al Karim, the book of Allah. The best of guidance is that of the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Worst of deed are innovative deed in this deen. For innovative deed could lead one astray, and astray could find his way to a hellfire. May Allah protect us from that. Amen. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Ni'ma Alhamd. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings of being Muslims. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings of witnessing Ramadan. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the opportunity to witness Ramadan. You see, Allah had times that are better than times, days that are better than days. He has months that are better than other months. He has places that are better than other places. And he has a human being that is better than all mankind, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he chose the Shahr Ramadan to be the best of the month. Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fi al-Qur'an. The month of Ramadan during which he revealed the Qur'an, the book of Allah. Hudan, wa bayinam min al-huda wa al-furqan. This is the month that this book that comes to separate and to set us free and set us on the path of mustaqim, the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the path of dividing truth and wrong. This month of Ramadan, people differ in how they prepare for the month of Ramadan. There are those who are excited when Ramadan is coming because of the gatherings. We have gatherings of iftar in the masajids. We come together and we break fast together. We eat together and we commemorate, we share this bread together. And by the way, this masjid is organized in those. This is a sunnah. It is being done in this masjid. And it needs your assistance in making it happen. And because it only not one can fund it, but it is the duties of all of us to fund for those who are incapable. So it's the month of al-Ata, the month of gift, a month of gift giving. But there are those who have this istiqbal of Ramadan for that moment to come together with the brothers and sisters. There are those who come to the month of Ramadan for the food, the kinds of food that they eat. There are those who come to the month of Ramadan for other, all of their desires, what is in their heart, what they're looking for the month of Ramadan. But there are those whom what they look for the month of Ramadan is a sujood, prostrate for the sake of Allah. There are those who the month of Ramadan they look forward to come and make a khat of the Quran, to complete the book. There are those who the month of Ramadan they look forward to come and stand with the brothers and make taraweeh. There are those who the month of Ramadan is for them the moment they come and stand with the brothers for the, for the hajjid at night. There are those whom the month of Ramadan is for them to repent to Allah. There are those who for the month of Ramadan is for them to turn back to Allah. For they have 11 months that they were floating or sinking and being buried with the sea or within the sea of sins and mistakes and ghafla or heedlessness. There are those who during that 11 months they have forgotten who Allah was. There are those whom the 11 months they made salat without khushur, without reverence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are those who the month of these 11 months come and went and they don't even know where, where, where they were. In the month of Ramadan, they come to repent to Allah. This is the month of Ramadan during which people need to come together. We need to come and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So isti'adad al nafsi. So we should prepare ourselves psychologically before the entrance of the month. On every day of the month, we renew this preparation. We renew this commitment with Allah. This is what the Sahabas used to do. Eleven, six months before Ramadan, they used to pray, Allahumma balibna Ramadan, Allahumma balibna Ramadan, oh Allah, give me the opportunity to get to Ramadan. And after Ramadan, they would say, Allahumma taqabbal minna Ramadan for six months, oh Allah, accept it from us. That is how they prepare themselves psychologically. But do we, do we fast just for fasting or make it a diet? There are those who, are they, what they do is a diet, it's just fasting, don't eat, don't drink. And they stay away from their spouses. That is a diet. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah said, Whosoever does not 
leave talking in vain, backbiting, lying, saying wrongful things, saying and being in places that are not supposed to be his place. Allah doesn't need you to give up your food and drink and your shahwa or your enjoyment. You might as well indulge into what you were doing. Because fasting is not only staying away from eating and drinking and the pleasures. Fasting is to renew yourself and see who you are. Reconnect with Allah. It is never said, Ayyamu Ramadan, but it is called Shahru Ramadan. The month of Ramadan. So your fasting, you being present in Ramadan is during the day and during the night. A moment of reconnecting with Allah, a moment of reconnecting with your brothers and sisters. As I always said sometimes, in the month of Ramadan, it is the season. This is when you prepare yourself for the off season, the 11 months that are to come. You reconnect yourself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the what's coming to it. So it is a month of tawbah, repentant to Allah. There are four conditions of tawbah. It's been said here before, most of us do know. Because one of them is to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to cease doing whatever you're repenting from once you know it's wrong. Once you know this is wrong, you stop doing it. And you, you, never, you plan never to return doing it again. And then you ask Allah for forgiveness for having done it. That is a tawbah. This is the month for you and I to stand and look back 11 months. What was I doing? Where was I going? Who was I accompanying? Who were my friends? Then I can repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawbah then that one comes in with regretfulness. Regretting for what you have done. So you can enter the month of Ramadan planning never to return back. Planning and regretting what you have done in the past. So that you will never do it again. Repentance that one knows that you are nobody in front of Allah. You know that you are nobody in front of Allah but his slave. A servant who comes to serve him because he tells you and I, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ mm. I have not created man and kind, mankind and the jinns except for them to worship me. So our existence is only to worship him. Re recognize that and give yourself, surrender yourself, submit yourself to that cause alone. That is the tawbah that you want to be. So that you can come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you know that you are weak, ta'ib, aghis, incapable of giving or doing anything for yourself. One tawbah that one gives up the rights of those whom you wrong. The people that you've been dealing with, your friends and those who are just acquaintance that you have done wrong in the past. You repent of to, to that wrong that you have done them. But the wrong that you take from someone doesn't get, we cannot repent it by just saying it, but we have to give the rights back. If you backbit somebody, go back where you have backbitten him and correct it. If you've taken the rights of somebody, go back and give it back before it's too late. Because when you die, it only can be taken from your good deeds. Repentance from wrongs that you do somebody by taking or saying something about him or her, and you know it's wrong before you die, repent of it. Some ulama, they say, you go to the person and tell him, I have said this and that. But some say, if you do that, you may add more salt to the injury. But you ask for forgiveness from him, and you pray for him, and you make sure you speak about him or her in the right terms and in the best way. Mm -hmm. Repentance that one's heart is clinging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he knows Allah is the only one that gives him what he desires. Nobody else can give it to him. Hang your coat where you know you will be finding. Mm -hmm. And if you hang it with Allah, you will find it. With anybody else, somebody can come behind and take it away from you. Tawbah that you tahiru lahum fi nafsu wa min al-hasad. A tawbah repentant that one cleans his heart from envy, hatred, disliking any other human being. You don't hate nobody except for the sake of Allah. So a repentance that one cleans his heart from that, so he can enter Ramadan with Allah loving him. With Allah not hating him and disliking him for what he dislikes his brothers and sisters. Repentance that one cleans his heart from being stingy. From being stingy and misery, not wanting to give. When they're asking to give in the masjid, you don't give. But when they're asking to give in some else, something else, you give as much. But remember, whatever you give for the sake of Allah is always bestowed or kept for you on the day of judgment. Mm. 
as the Prophet said, the giving of the giver has never taken away from what his wealth is. As he used to make dua, Allahumma atil munfiqa khalafa wa atil munfiqa talafa. Oh Allah, give those who give a replacement for what they give. Or give, or give, make right in those who kept what they have, not giving it, make it right in their hands. And those who give, replace for what they give. So give while you can. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to be kana ajwad ma yakun fi shahri Ramadan. He was described to be kana ajwad al nas. He was the most generous of mankind. But kana ajwad ma yakun fi shahri Ramadan. He was most generous when the month of Ramadan comes. So give for the sake of Allah. وَلْيَكُنْ لَكَ فِي فِي هَذَا الْمِبْوَأَيِّ فِي هَذِي الْأَيَّامُ وَقْتُ مَا رَبَّكَ Choose some times for your Lord between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at night when you have munajah. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in the hadith that when the night comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend until the sama al arabiyah or until the sama al dunya the sama or the heavens of this universe. And he will ask, هَلْ مِنْ مُسْتَغْفِرِينَ Is there anybody who is repenting? هَلْ مِنْ تَائِبٍ Is there any man who is repenting, asking for forgiveness? هَلْ مِنْ سَائِلٍ Is there anyone that is asked for me to give him? هَلْ مِنْ دَاعٍ Is there anyone who is giving supplication? حَتَّى يَنْفَجِرَ الْفَجْرِ Until the fajr comes. So reserve a time between you and Allah so you can to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this time. And it is saying, وَحْتُ صَحْرِ Before the dawn comes, before fajr comes. The last one third of the night. That's when Allah is coming asking for us. Ask for forgiveness, I will forgive you. Ask me and I will give you. Repent and I will forgive you. As Rasulullah said, فَلَا تَحْرِمُ نَفْسَكَ مِنْ هَذِي Do not, do not prohibit yourself. Do not prevent, do not deprive yourself from these moments that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes to give to those who ask for him. Have some time with Quran. Have some time with Quran during this month. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to make Khatim al-Quran. Jibreel Kana Yudaris wrote Quran. He used to come and read with him the Quran during the month of Ramadan. <coughs> if you are trying to have it a habit, then you make a Khatim al-Quran during the month of Ramadan, so it becomes a habit. Don't be among those whom Allah said in their right, وَقَالَ رَسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّبَدُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا Oh Allah, this is my people. They have abundant the Quran. Do not abandon the Quran. Remember the last khutbah I made here was how to get close to Allah, how to increase your love of Allah. The first condition of Imam Ibn al-Qayyim was read the Quran. Read the book of Allah. This is the time that Imam al-Malik, when it comes during Ramadan, he will stop teaching anything. No sharia, no fiqh, no nothing. He will only read the Quran. He will only teach the Quran during this month of Ramadan. Places of a Muslim places, Muslim countries, or some of the scholars during the month of Ramadan is where they hold the tafsir of Quran. And they make the whole qatim of the Quran, tafsir, translated, explaining the Quran to the ummah during this time. No, if you are not, this is the description they gave to those who do not. And may Allah protect us from being amongst those. Mm -hmm. Those who do not read the Quran during this time. Istahwaza alayhimu shaytan fa'ansahumu dhikr Allah. Shaitan has overtaken their hearts and they have forgotten the remembrance of Allah. May Allah protect us from those. Amen. So here we are, let's ask ourselves during this month of Ramadan, where are we with this? Have we been planning? How did we get expert? Have we entered this Ramadan? Accepted this Ramadan so Allah will accept it from us? Are we going to enter Ramadan the same way we, we exit the Ramadan, the same way we enter it? Or are we going to in exit Ramadan and say Ramadan will remain or oh, the month of Ramadan has changed me? I'm a different person now. Have we written down a plan of what we're going to do during this month of Ramadan? Or have we planned this plan, put have a, a plan in the book or in our phones, planning to do these during the month of Ramadan and following it with a check mark? Yes, done. It is done. Or is it going to come at the end and we delete it and start a new page? أقول ما تسمعون واستغفر الله لي ولكم يا فوز المستغفرين إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا 
تعلموا أن من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يدلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونظيرا Beloved brothers and sisters Maybe this is our last Ramadan Maybe this is our last Ramadan And we do not know Into it with this Ramadan With a heart that is filled with sins Think of yourself that you are full of sins And ma'asi and disobedience Think of it that way That would give you the opportunity That would give you the courage to ask for forgiveness But do not enter Ramadan thinking you are the best I go to the masjid all the time. I make salats all the time. I, 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 you will not enter this Ramadan in the best manner. But enter it feeling that you haven't done enough. So you can enter the Ramadan with the courage to ask for more. With a conscience that is always constantly following you and asking you who you are and where you are. Have you made this? Have you done this? Let your conscience constantly talking to you. After 11 months of sins, of being buried in this, in this disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, enter this Ramadan with the eye that cries, with a heart that is submissive to Allah. With a heart that is submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that all of this time has gone without me doing what I was supposed to do. Here is the time for me to catch up with what I have, what is gone. Because if there is only a moment of in your time left, if this is the only month that is left for you, then you have an opportunity. If there is only a woman left in your time, in your life, know that you still have an opportunity. Allah told us, Qul ya ibadiya ladhina asrafu ala anfusim, la tahnatu min rahmatillah, inna la yaqlilu zunuba jami'ah. Do not despair for whatever happened in the last 11 months. Allah is telling you, come to me, I will forgive them all. And I wouldn't care. I'll give it, forgive to you all of the sins and I wouldn't care. Come to this month expecting and hoping that Allah forgives him. Do not be among those whom the Prophet ﷺ is whispering in your ears and telling you or reminding you. Or let us, let us be the one who the Prophet ﷺ is reminding. A big loser whom is the one whom Ramadan comes to him and Ramadan leaves him without him being forgiven. A true loser is the one who enters Ramadan and exits Ramadan without being forgiven. Take this Ramadan as your last Ramadan. There are brothers whom we know from this community that are no longer with us. Brother Sadiq, Sister Cheryl, Uncle Farid, Imam Khalid. Brother Sayyid Omar, and Imam Khalid. Sayyid. Where are them? Sayyid. Not all of them are now in Sundukum Yusalu. They are all in their graves being asked by Allah. Sayyid all of them are buried now. We have forgotten them, but they are still hoping they would have been here and make another Ramadan. So make this Ramadan count because you may not see another Ramadan. <laughs> and nothing, no ibadah would be accepted. None of them you will do for yourself. This is the only moment, the only thing that you can do for yourself. Fasting during this month of Ramadan, getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have this opportunity of being alive. How many, do, not all of them, Brother Saeed, Sayyid Omar and Brother Uncle Khalil, Uncle, Uncle Farid, not long ago they've gone. They were here last year, but they were hoping to fast Ramadan with us, and they haven't had the chance to make it. You are here making Ramadan and having a star in the Jama'at. There are brothers and sisters who are in prisons making Ramadan in there. I have a young man whom I am in contact with constantly, sending him some food during Ramadan, and they're in prison. Think about those and the opportunity that Allah gave you. Think about those who are being bound. Right now, they are running right away from their homes because they are being bound and you are here in your air-conditioned and heated places. 
That's a blessing from Allah. Be grateful to him. And how do you be grateful to him? How can I not be the grateful servant of Allah? And being the grateful servant of Allah is to al-shukru min jinsin ni'ma. From the what he gave you, you give him thank God. So you submit to Allah and you worship him as he ordered you and I to do. There are those who are being chased from their homes. They don't have a place to, to, to eat to sleep. There are those who when they break fast, you don't know, do you know what they break fast with? You have the choice of choosing chicken or lamb or beef, hot dogs. And there are those who if they have a bite of a food, that's all they got. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi fasted the month of Ramadan and who fasted and broke his fast with three days. And we will be asked for this ni'am that Allah gave us. What do we do with it? This is a hapl that Allah gave us. This is what the one of the ulama say. Ha huwa hablun najajin yuqaddimu ilayka Ramadan. Here is the, the rope of safety that Ramadan is giving you. Is giving you. لِيَنْتَشُوَكَ مِنْ بِعْرِ الْقَدِيْعَةِ So that it can extract you from the well of sins and crimes. عِشْتَ فِيهَا إِحْدَى عَشْرَ شَرَّةً That you've been diving or living in for 11 months. وَيَنْقُلُكَ إِلَىٰ رَوْضَتِهِ وَجِنَانِهِ So that it can take you to its paradise and the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the month of Ramadan. This is what we need to remember during the month of Ramadan. There is so much to be said about Ramadan, but there is so little that we can do during the month of Ramadan. But I told you before that last time our khutbah here was to talk about the 10 points that brings us closer to Allah, increases our love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These 10 points that bring us to closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, first of which was Qiraatul Quran. What is better than reading the Quran during the month of Ramadan? Brings you closer to Allah. And Nawafil, during the Nawafil Sunnah, you make Tarawiyah, you make Tahajjud during the month of Ramadan. Dhikrullah, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dhikr, to remember Allah during the days of, during the nights of Ramadan. What is a better than Dhikr? Best of Dhikr is of Quran. To remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number six among those was Asadish Mushahadat al Ni'amihi al Zahira wal Batina. To remember to see the bounties and the blessings of Allah that He gave you. Allah gave you this gift. You see, if someone gives you a gift, you love them. You are happy with them. But what about the one who gave you all of these gifts of life and making you a Muslim and allowing you to witness Ramadan? In Kisar al Qalb, let your heart be pondered, be pulverized in front of Allah. Submit to Allah. To talk to Allah to see his favors upon you so you can be amongst those who love Allah the most. They ask the ulama, they said, Does a heart prostrate? And Ibn Qayyim he said, Naam yasjud. Naam yasjud la yarfa'a sahu illa yawm ila yawm al qiyamah. The heart prostrates, but it will never raise its head until the day of judgment because it had tasted what Allah means. فَأَسَادُ خَلْقِ اللَّهِ عَبْدُهُ أَوْوُدِيَةُ اللَّهِ اللَّهِ The most happiness, the most, the happiest person is the one who completes his servitude, so the duty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. اِحْتَيْنْ مَنْ شِئْتَ فَإِنَّكَ تَكُونُ أَسِيرَهُ Make your knees belong to somebody else. Need someone else. Let you need anybody, you become his, his hostage because he will control you from your needs. But if you need Allah, you turn to Allah. He will give you. He asks, Ask me and I will give you. When you ask somebody, you become his hostage. Don't need anybody, you become his equal. If you need nobody, you become his equal. But if you need anybody, you become his asir, you become his hostage. Whomsoever you give good, you, you be good deeds to, you become his amir. Khalwatun, the number eight was a khalwatun, to have time with you, between you and Allah, and that I mentioned earlier. Number nine, he says, Mujalasu Siddiq, Mujalasu Salihin, having good friends. And if you don't have good friends right now, here's a moment to come to the masjid and meet the brothers and sisters who can be good friends to you. Mm. Show me your friends and I will tell you who you are. Isn't that what the English would say? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al marwat ala dunya al Anyone is in the religion of his friends. Mm -hmm. 
He described them, he said, a Masalu Jalisu Sayyi and Wal Masalu Jalisu Al Hasana, just gathering or the friendship between a, of a good one with a bad person is as if someone is sitting with a Hamil Al Kir, or Nafiq Al Kir, wa Ba'd Al Misk. Or if you're comparing it, one is being a friend or sitting with someone who sells misk or someone who is a blacksmith. Someone who sells misk would always give you some of the misk. You would buy from the misk, or he gives you some of the misk, or you leave him smelling good. Mm -hmm. But someone is a nagar or gear, someone who is a blacksmith, and blowing in his bellows, it will only burn your clothes or send you home with a stinky smell of the smoke. Mm. So choose your friends. Choose your friends. Al Maru ala Dini Khalili. That's what the Prophet said. Al Bu'adu al Kullima Yahulu Bain al Kalbi wa Rabbi. Take yourself away from what is prohibited from you by Allah. Then you will love your love of Allah will increase in your heart. Know what is this, what are the sins and you abstain from them. Know what is right and you follow them. Allah wa Obey the Prophet and his Allah and his Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa But if you don't, you become amongst those who say, I will just commit it just a little bit of a sin. I'm just going to make a quick check on the Facebook here and I'm going to look at that website. And the next thing you know, you become amongst those whom he describes, Kalla barrahan. Your heart becomes stained with that search you did and the next time you get another stain. And the next time you get another stain. And you get another stain until it becomes kalabarana ala kulubim. Their hearts become covered with all of this sin. Makano yaksibun. What have they earned from this these sins? Kalla ino rabbim yoma idin la mahjubun. These people that their hearts are covered with this sin, they will be covered. They will be shielded from seeing their Lord. They will never have that opportunity. Hmm. Then they would be dragged into hellfire and Allah protect us from that. That's what the Prophet said. If you love Allah, follow me. Follow my path. Here's the last what I would term, finish with. This short little poem of, Arab, of, 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 of one of the Arabs, he said, Taksil ilahu. You disobey Allah and then you, you're demonstrating that you love him. You disobey him and you're demonstrating that you love him. This indeed is very strange. It is really strange that you, you just show that you love him, but yet you disobey him. If your love was true, you would obey him. For the lover to whom he loves, he obeys. Beloved brothers and sisters, this is the month of, uh, month of Ramadan, an opportunity that comes to us. And it will leave shahidan lana or shahidan alayna. To witness for us or to witness against us. Let us make it a witness for us rather than a witness against us. Badiru fi nafaqat. Badiru hasten in the givings. Hasten in the sadaqat. It is amongst the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to give. And I will finish with this. This masjid is organizing dinner breakfast every, every day. Is it? Every day they have yes. breakfast in this masjid. Yeah. And this is funded by people like you and I. Spend and give into that iffah. Because if you make somebody break their fast, even with a date, Allah will give you the reward of a fasting a day. That person who fasted, you get a reward as much as he or she got without taking away from their fast. If you give them a plate, a, a dish, if you give them a drink, and if you give them, and you give them, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply your gifts, you multiply your rewards according to the level of your gift. And I've said what I've said, if there's anything like this, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever is wrong is from my shortcomings, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me and forgive each and every one of you. ربنا إننا ذلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وضرياتنا قرة عوي وجنا للمتقين إماما يا ربي بذاتي والصفاتي كلنا في سائر الحالات ثبت قلوبنا على الإيمان وتهدنا لعمل الإحسان وانظر إلينا وانصر لنا الدين أدي حقوقنا وأدي دينا وهب لنا ذرية مباركة تكون لله بلا مشاركة وإذي كل من إلينا أحسنا 
وجازي وعنا جزاء أحسنا بالمصطفى شفيع يوم المعشر خيرا ولا من قد حبي بالكوثر عليه صلى ربنا وسلم وفاد بخيرنا وعمما وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق الناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقدار العظيم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وإنا عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فذكروا لا يذكركم ولا ذكر لا أكبر وأتم وأجل والله يعلم ما تسنعون وأقم الصلاة أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلا قال كما تسلا قال كما تسلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Allahu Akbar. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. Malik Yawm Al-Din. إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغلوب عليهم ولا الضالين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى ذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يسلى النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تذكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي سحف الأولى سحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر 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 بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين 
الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين تلتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ذريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وذرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سُتِحَتْ فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله عذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر 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 السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Activities happening. We want to let everyone know that the martial arts class for children is continuing. Um, that's on Sundays in the afternoon. Uh, the Sheikh Kafani is also continuing his class on the three stations of the religion. That's Sundays from 11:30 to 1 p.m. Inshallah, here in the first classroom. Um, and then uh, we also have. Uh, we just want to remind everyone to join for Tarawih every night after Isha. Inshallah. I think that's all the announcements. We're moving towards more more days of, of iftar other than the three. Inshallah, when that comes, yes. 
We have the Shahada, inshallah, so we ask if our brothers and sisters want to help welcome this person to the community that you wait while they give the Shahada. Uh, the brother asked if chess was still happening. It is still happening, actually. Alhamdulillah, the will is continuing the chess on Saturday as well. And I also want to encourage everyone, all of these announcements get sent out on Thursday night over the email list. Please get on the email list if you're not on it, or in the WhatsApp group. And there's posters in the hallway for how you can get in the WhatsApp group. We're trying to give people more you know, opportunities to, to get all this news from the message. Yes, yes, yes. All right, one more announcement, two more announcements. Please send all announcements through the secretary's office, inshallah, so that we can give them in a timely way. And then lastly, for anybody who would like, we have Sadika boxes in the back from Life Relief and Development in partnership with the Masjid. And please see uh, Brother Omar and the Saturdays, the uh, soup kitchen staff will be distributed in those right now. <laughs> We have uh, Shahada. Brother Tawala. Brother Tawala. Brother Tawala, you're reaffirming your Shahada, is that what it is? Yes, sir. Okay, so you know all the tenets of, already of the of, of Islam, you know the pillars? Yes, sir. Okay. So you know your way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and his oneness? Yes, sir. And your way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in your last messenger? Yes, sir. All right, so repeat after me, we're going to say it in Arabic and then in English. Ashhadu, Ashhadu, Allah, Allah, Ilaha, Ilaha, Illallah, Illallah. Wa, Wa, Ashhadu, Ashhadu, Anna, Anna, Muhammadah, Muhammadah, Rasulullah, Rasulullah. I openly testify, I openly testify, there's no God but Allah, there's no God but Allah, and I openly testify, and I openly testify that Muhammad, that Muhammad, son of Abdullah, son of Abdullah, is the last messenger and slave of Allah. Is the last messenger and slave of Allah. Takbir! Allah! 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 Of Brother Ahmed's daughter, our beloved brother is part of our community. Okay, so I take it that you've been indoctrinated by your father to know who Allah is yes. and who the Prophet Muhammad is. Yes. Okay, so would you repeat after me? Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. 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 Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. 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 Wa ashhadu ashhadu anna anna muhammada muhammada rasulullah rasulullah i openly bear witness i openly bear witness that there's no god except allah that there's no god except allah and i openly bear witness and i openly witness that muhammad that muhammad the son of abdullah the son of abdullah is the last slave and messenger of allah is the last slave and messenger of allah take bit take bit You have belonged to the, the family of Muslims for eight billion hey. Muslims around here. Yeah. I'm his daughter too. Oh, that's daughter. But, I, but I've been Muslim. Allah. 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 Allah.